Hi everyone, so tonight we are going to be reading chapter 17 of the Christmasaurus, A Dinosaur in the House. The Christmasaurus landed with a crash in the fireplace. Luckily the fire hadn't been lit because Mr Trundle knew that you should never light a fire on Christmas Eve. The dinosaur got to his feet and stepped out into William's empty living room. The Christmasaurus had never been in a room like this before. He'd only ever known a large, oversized, magical room of the North Pole Ranch. And they were far grander than this little wonky room. But there was something in the distant light about it. Something felt cosy and warm, happy. He could sense that the people who lived here were full of love. But there wasn't time to look around. He was desperate to see Stuffy one last time. He had to find his toy, say goodbye and get back into that sleigh before Santa caught him. He was being very naughty. His dinosaur eyes scanned the room, searching for an empty sign of the spotty wrapping paper or shiny red ribbon, but there was nothing. There was a small Christmas tree about the size of an elf. He never ever seen one so tiny before, which was a scattering of small presents underneath it. But none of them were stuffy. Santa must have been put William in William's room. The Christmas Christmasaurus knew that Santa did that sometimes, so he tiptoed out of the living room, sniffing the beige pattern carpet, following the scent of Santa, who smelt like a fresh mint chocolate and tangerines. The door of the next room was slightly ajar, and through the crack, the Christmas Christmasaurus could just make out the shape of a small bed. Sitting in a silver of the moon boom, on the bedroom floor was a beautifully wrapped dinosaur-shaped present of which he had been searching. He slipped inside William's bedroom, but passed, sorry, but paused for a moment to take in the wonderful dinosaur pictures and toys and books and posters and wallpaper. He'd never seen so much dinosaur stuff before. It was dino awesome. As his eyes circled the room, he came back to Stuffy, perfectly wrapped on the bedroom floor. He crept across the room and carefully as he could until he was face to face with where the stuffed dinosaur's nose would be. Through a small slit in the wrapping paper, he could just make out a soft glow of the toy's golden button eyes staring out. The Christmasaurus took a deep breath. This was it. This was goodbye. Goodbye to the first and only dinosaur friend he'd ever had. He gave it a crumpled hug through the wrapping paper over his cuddly shoulder. He saw William lying snugly asleep in bed. It was at that moment that the Christmas Christmasaurus suddenly felt a funny feeling in his tummy. Like the sinking sort of feeling you get when you dive over the bridge really fast. He glanced around at the room and the photos of William and Mr Trundle. Then at the empty wheelchair next to the bed, he huffed a deep sigh through his nostrils and then straightened up the present and looked at it closely to, as closely to El Perfect as possible. It was time to let Stuffy go. That's when he heard it. Flush, stomp, stomp. It was the unmistakable sound of the toilet flushing, followed by Santa's boots stomping Deep speedily down the hallway. Stomp, 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 stomp. He was marching faster than the Christmas Christmasaurus jo saw his jolly round shadow past William's bedroom door. Santa was already in the living room. Ooh, a carrot, my favourite, he heard Santa whispering before crunching it into the treat. The Christmas Christmasaurus panicked. If he didn't make it back up in the roof before Santa, then he would be, he'd be left behind. He turned round clumsily on the spot and with what thud of a long tail swung round behind him, knocking over every book on William's bookshelf. All were books about dinosaurs, of course. Then he took a great leap towards the door and his clunky dinosaur claws got caught in stuffy wrapping paper and ribbon and the Christmasaurus went tumbling, bumbling across the floor at the other side of the bedroom, smashing, whacking into the wardrobe. As you can imagine, this made such a clatter that William woke up in an instant, 
What, what, what's going on? He said through the yawn, rubbing his eyes open. As the room came into focus, William saw a large, spotty present sitting beyond the floor, sorry, the foot of his bed, hand tied with red ribbon, but the ribbon had come undone. His eyes followed the loose red ribbon along the floor until it reached a large, scaly foot. The ribbon was caught round the Christmas horse's claw, all tangled in knots. Before William could blink, before he could scream, before he could think, before he could even do anything whatsoever, the Christmas horse bolted out of the room at a hundred miles an hour, dragging the present behind him. William scrambled out of bed into his waiting wheelchair and chased after them. The Christmas horse burst into the small cosy living room just in time to see Santa's big black boots disappearing magically up the chimney. He roared a panicking roar and dived towards the fireplace, trampling over presents and ripping over the miniature Christmas tree in this process, sending decorations flying through the air and scattering it over the floor. But it didn't stop the Christmas Christmasaurus. He crawled into the fireplace and looked up the chimney, which was now seemingly far too small, even an elf to get through. He tried desperately to jump, climb, claw his way up, but it was no use. Santa's magic had worn off and the chimney flue had deflated back to its normal size. Then came the worst noise of all. The clopping of hooves accompanied by the soft Christmas music echoed down the chimney, then all of a sudden seemed to disappear completely. The Christmas saurus had let out a howl like a roar up the chimney into the sky above, but it was too late. They were gone. The Christmas horus had been left behind. It was at that moment that a bright round light switched on like a spotlight. It was a shaky, wobbly light. It came from a torch in William's nervous hand as he sat in his wheelchair at the door, looking at the dinosaur in his home. Oh my, let's see what's going to happen next, I wonder.